Good morning, church. I got some new lights in my office so my face doesn't look sunburned all the time. Hey, I want to take you to a passage of scripture that I think is really important for us, especially today, but really all the time. It's in John chapter 21, beginning in verse 18. It says this, Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Now, if I give that passage to you without any context whatsoever, it sounds like a nursing home, it sounds like a passage that works for anybody, and it sounds like uh, the Bible is telling you that, you know, when you get old, you're going to get senile. But let me give you some context. This passage is Jesus talking to Peter. And Jesus says to Peter, after he has risen from the dead, he then comes to Peter, he says, Peter, do you really love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I really love you. And so then Jesus says, okay, so feed my sheep. And he gives Peter these instructions that Peter is supposed to become one of the leaders who feeds others. In other words, Jesus says, listen, I know you've failed me. I know you denied me three times. But listen, I want you to know that your job is to feed into other people, to, to feed other people with the knowledge that I've given you. In other words, what Jesus is saying is, your own mistakes do not hinder your ministry. Your own mistakes lead you to the place where you can do a better job of feeding others, or at least it doesn't absolve you of doing the job of feeding others. Jesus says to Peter, I want you to feed my sheep. But then he goes into this little soliloquy where he says, very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you don't want to go. Jesus says to Peter, one of these days when you get older, someone else is going to lead you. And then verse 19, John describes to us why Jesus says it. It says, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. You see, somehow Peter understood that when Jesus said, someone else will lead you where you do not want to go, Jesus was talking about crucifixion. Jesus was talking about Peter, one of these days, being executed for his faith. Now, if Jesus were to say those words to you and you understood what they meant, I imagine that would be a threatening, frightening kind of experience. When Jesus says, one of these days, you are going to be led where you do not want to go. One of these days, you are going to be executed for your faith. And then Jesus says, follow me. You know, if I heard Jesus say those words, I would be really intimidated. I would be a little bit scared. And I would think to myself, is there any way I could get out of this? So take a look at what Peter says next. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who'd leaned back at Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? This is a thing all of us do. When we finally hear that some bad news is about to come to us, our first response, our first reaction is to look at someone else. Look at some other person around us. Point our finger at that person and say, yeah, well, what about that person? God, what about that person? Now, here's the deal. For you and for me, I think it helps us sometimes to think we're not alone. It helps us sometimes to think that someone else is going through a difficult time just like we are. And so that's one of the things that causes us to want to know what's happening to someone else's life. But Peter in this moment hears something really tragic about his own future, something that could scare him, something that could make him nervous, something that maybe he should say, Lord, how would I have the strength to handle this? Or Jesus, what was death like for you? Or Jesus, is it really going to hurt that much? Or Jesus, how long will I have to suffer? Or Jesus, tell me more, give me more information, give me a promise that you're going to give me strength. But instead, Peter's first reaction is probably the same reaction you and I would have. Lord, what about that guy? What about that other guy? And Jesus' response to him is just absolutely priceless. Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Jesus repeats his exact same words. He said, follow me to Peter earlier. Now he says, you must follow me. Here's Jesus' point. It's an amazing thing. 
He says, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? In other words, what does it matter to you what happens to him? You've got a responsibility. You've got a task. You've got a challenge. Your task, your responsibility, your challenge is follow me. Jesus says, you must follow me. See, we like to think of other people's responsibilities. We like to think of what's going to happen to other people. But it's hard for us to imagine that there are some responsibilities that are ours and ours alone. Jesus is very clear. Your responsibility is simple. Follow me. What happens to other people is not your concern. We do this all the time. It's called whataboutism. It's when we say, well, Jesus, what about this? Or what about that? Or, or we hear some bad news and we say, well, what about this? Or what about that? And we, we try to deflect and redirect and, and think that something else is really the big issue so that we can bypass our own issues, so that we can procrastinate our own decisions. And Jesus says, no, what is all that to you? You must follow me. I imagine during this time, you are tempted to think the what about kinds of thoughts. What about these other people? What about that person? Why am I dealing with this and the other people aren't dealing with this? Why is it so hard for me or, or whatever? And I imagine Jesus just whispering into your ears, what is that to you? You must follow me. I'm calling you to something. You must follow me. Well, What's interesting um, is that Peter isn't the only person who asks the what about question. Look at what John writes next. He says, because of this, the rumors spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? I love how John has to undo this rumor. Now, we know that John was writing this gospel around the late first century. So 80s, maybe 90s, he was writing this gospel. And he was the last living disciple. And so because he had lived so long, a lot of people thought, well, John's not going to die. He's going to stay alive until Jesus returns. And John knows there is a there's a chance Jesus is going to linger and not return during his lifetime. And he doesn't want people to feel like when John dies, then the whole thing was a farce. And so he needs to say this line to remind people that if he dies, it's not because Jesus made a promise he would live. It's because Jesus just hasn't come back yet, and that's fine. But this rumor indicates the same kind of thinking that Peter had. It's the whataboutism. See, all of us want the blessings of other people to fall on us. And we all want the curses that fall on us to actually fall on other people. We all have the same mentality, the same desire. And so Peter says, well, if I'm going to face this hardship, what's going to happen to this other guy? And then other people say, well, hey, listen, John hasn't died yet. And if he is going to face the blessing of seeing Jesus return with his physical eyes, then why can't we receive that blessing? And so the rumor spreads and it's all about the what about. We want the thing that we think is true about the other person to be true for us. And so we speculate and we're like, oh, wow, wouldn't that be great? But listen, Jesus' claim to Peter and his statement that John reiterates here is the same that all of us need to keep in mind. What is that to you? You must follow me. Our temptation during difficult times is to point the finger at others. Our temptation during great times is to keep the finger on ourselves. And Jesus would say, it doesn't matter what the time is. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. What matters is that you've got a job to do. You must follow me. And I want to encourage you the same. You might be facing all kinds of difficulty, dilemma, or whatever. You might be tempted to point the fingers at someone else. You might be able to look at someone else's blessing and wonder why that blessing isn't yours. You might be wondering why your particular pain or hardship 
isn't shared by someone else. And I just want to say the same thing to you that Jesus would say to you. What is that to you? You must follow Jesus. Today, don't point your finger at someone else. Today, don't get yourself into whataboutism. Today, don't imagine all that other stuff. Today, follow Jesus. What is all that to you? Follow Jesus. Let me pray for you. Jesus, we need your strength. There are things you're going to call us to that we can't handle on our own. Uh, You said it yourself that we can't produce any fruit unless we remain in you and your strength and your life remains in us. And so today, I just pray you'd help us to be those who abide. I pray that you would help us to be those who remain. Help us to be those who can say, what is all that other stuff to us? What is all that other stuff to me? I will follow Jesus. Lord Jesus, hold us close to yourself. Give us the strength we need, the encouragement we need to keep our eyes on you and our fingers not pointed at anyone else. Thanks for today. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember today, you've got a job to do. You must follow Jesus. Have a great day following him.